Hello guys! Last night we have paralyzed three really big Russian oil refineries after the successful attacks of Ukrainian drones that reached deep inside Russian Ria, targeting these oil refineries in Ryazan, Leningrad and Nizhny Novgorod regions. But today I do not want to focus on the geography of explosions or their size. Let's talk about the economic influence of such destructions for Russian Federation and the smart strategy of Ukrainian armed forces, how to target Russian economy using really cheap Ukrainian drones. This is important for the understanding of what can we do in times when we have limited resources and an extremely aggressive enemy that quickly adapted to sanctions and switched into this military economy rails. So let me tell you more about this beautiful strategy that is so successfully implemented by Ukrainian armed forces. My name is Anna and I vlog daily from Ukraine since the start of the brutal Russian invasion. So if you're new to the channel, you support Ukraine, please subscribe and help us fight against Russian propaganda and fake news. And yes, we often discuss explosions on the territory of Russian Federation on this channel. And my longtime friends, check your subscription status and hit notification button. Last night, serious explosions took place in Razan, Nizhny Novgorod and Leningrad regions on very big oil refineries. And this is not the first time, not the second, not the tenth, maybe the hundredth time that we target their oil infrastructure. Why? These are also legitimate targets because, first of all, they produce oil and fuel that is later used by Russian army. And they support them with huge sizes of these supplies. It is needed for Russian helicopters, for Russian aircraft that later sail Ukrainian territory, Russian tanks, Russian missile systems, and so on. But also, fuel is the main fuel for Russian budget. Russia is quickly adapting to sanctions, to war. Sometimes it seems that this war economy is even better for deteriorating Russian economy in general. They cannot compete in science, in medicine, in education, in innovation. They can only play with the world when they pretend to be strong military power, actually bullying all of us. And now we see that very clearly. But having adapted to the sanctions, Russia continued selling its fuel, its energy to the partners directly or indirectly, avoiding various limitations. And anyway, Russian fuel, Russian oil is one of the main products that bring them money and thus helps Putin's regime to survive and also supplies Russian army. And that's why choosing this very smart strategy of destruction of their big oil refineries we actually lead to the destruction of russian military economy remember to subscribe if you're new to the channel and demonstrate your solidarity with ukraine so during this last year we see how cheap ukrainian drones developed on the territory of ukraine sometimes provided by our partners are able to travel really far away and this is a breakthrough of this war because war also brings lots of inventions especially if the country is limited in weapons long-range missiles you know aircraft and other stuff you have to be creative and so ukrainian drones can travel really really far away of course these are big drones these are not classical mavic drone that you imagine when you visualize a drone in your mind in your consciousness they can travel really far away with great loads of explosives and cause serious destructions and ukraine has targeted many dozens of big russian oil refineries not just depots that used for storing oil but refineries that are used to produce various products of oil and oh my god this war made me learn so many military terms and now they made me learn more about oil production 
and uh, when I've read the updates about the destructions caused by Ukrainian drone attack on the oil refinery in Ryazan, I've learned that our drones are perfect in targeting the important elements of production and the most important element that was destroyed in Ryazan was this distillation tower that is used, it's actually a big building, that is used to uh, separate, and I have put down this phrase, crude oil into components for further production of other oil products. But this is a very complicated construction, a very expensive construction, and taking into account that sanctions work in this sphere and it's difficult for Russians to get details and elements they need. It may take more than two, three years to build another distillation tower in the Rezan oil refinery, which means they won't be able to use this refinery for years and thus they will have less oil for selling and less fuel for the Russian army. And that is beautiful. Uh, so I see it very clearly that with this limited resources, our allies quarreling or getting ready for the elections, while waiting for the supply, we decided to invest our money and time in the development of Ukrainian army of drones and in the inventions that help these drones be more I don't know, flexible, travel further. And we know Russian infrastructure of oil production, and we target these important elements in big oil refineries. And by destroying these crucial elements in the production cycle, like distillation towers, we paralyze. And we paralyze more and more of these oil refineries, which leads to the lack of resources, Russian inability to sell them to China, I don't know, other partners that continue buying from Russia. And this is a very smart strategy of Ukrainian armed forces that is actually implemented with cheap tools. And oh my God, I, I honestly start loving uh, drones. Uh, of course, there are military targets that are also legitimate, like tank uh, factories, like uh, aircraft repair and production factories, but oil refineries are even easier to find and target because Russia is super vulnerable. This is another message that this night and many other nights with explosions on the territory of Russian Federation demonstrate us. They lack air defense systems. All of them are used in Russia around Moscow, around St. Petersburg, on the front lines, of course, covering uh, Russian invaders and all around Putin's bunkers. And we know there are many of them, but in general, they don't have enough air defense systems for the country. They don't care about people and they don't have ones that can protect their oil refineries or military factories. And by destroying them, we make Russia weaker, we make Ukrainian victory closer, and once again we remind the world that we follow the rules, the orders, we only target legitimate objects. We are not orcs, and I'm sure you had enough uh, <laughs> evidence to trust us, and that's why uh, you can fully support us with long-range missiles. Don't be afraid, we will not use them for civilian objects as Russians do in Ukraine. We are different and we are fighting for the good. And when you're bad, you cannot fight for the good. So it's kind of vital. But um, let me know what do you think about this Ukrainian strategy to paralyze Russian oil infrastructure and also to send beautiful messages to Russian oligarchs who are also important elements of Russian economy, like core elements and also criminal friends of Putin. Perhaps they are dissatisfied with such uh, destructions. Uh, anyway, um, thank you so much for all the support that we feel. Thank you for your advice and comments that you leave. Uh, remember to join me on Instagram, Threads, X, and uh, Discord. Also, we have a beautiful merch shop with lots of nice t-shirts, sweatshirts, and cups and stickers with drones, Ukrainian drones too, and they work well as conversation starters and reminders about Ukraine.
Thank you for buying me coffees, becoming my patrons and helping me film more. But most importantly, thank you for standing with Ukraine. Slava Ukraini!